Yes, we do have a mock draft from The Ringer here, and we have two trades in the top 10. Let's hear it. So let's start here with the obvious. Number one, Caleb Williams goes to the Bears. Jaden Daniels goes number two to the Washington Commanders. Time out for one moment. Yes. Stoney, what is your opinion on Jaden Daniels? I think he's going to be really good. You So you are pro Daniels. Yes. In fact, the last Michigan State football game I saw at Spartan Stadium oh my was God. the Arizona State game. Where he Fourth was and court. 19. Yes. Mike Tressel. Yes. Hey, we got a spy. It's like Joe Bocci in the middle of the field. <laughs> Yeah, who could forget? Yeah, but I am sorry to bring that up. No, but I, I don't care. I have no feelings anymore. I just I, w- I wanted to know. I, l- yes. I had no idea if you I liked him. He well or not. deserved the Heisman Trophy. He was okay. he was really good conference he played in. I think David yes. the, uh, the 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 trade please. All we right. do have a trade here at three. The Vikings trade up. They've traded, of course, eleven and twenty three or whatever to get the Patriots pick at number three. They take Drake May. Whoa. They also give in this thing 108 and next year's first rounder. Yes. I would never. No, it's too there much. There is no scenario where I would give that up as the Minnesota Vikings, no. ever. It's two number ones. I mean, you could give up 11 and 23 and move to five and get J.J. McCarthy. It's three number ones, Stoney. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Yeah. Two this year, one well, next right, year. Well, one, yeah, but they get one back. So yeah. it's the, I, I yeah. will vote no on that. And look, I like Drake May. Yeah. I think Drake May's got a hell of a lot of talent, prototype. You know, he's played behind a bad old line unlike other people. I just, but I'm not giving that up. And yes, I'm the king of saying if you don't have a quarterback, get one within reason. Right. We can't be Mike Dick on the cover of ESPN Magazine trading a whole draft to get somebody. <laughs> the greatest. At number four, the obvious, Marvin Harrison Jr. continues to go to the Arizona Cardinals. Isn't that the right fit, though? I think so. Yes. I think people have overthought it here with the Cardinals. The problem is there's a lot of people who believe that for some reason he's not the best receiver in the draft. That's called prospect fatigue. Yes. Go ahead, David. We have a trade. The New York Jets trade up, take the number fifth pick from the set from the Los Angeles Chargers, and they select Malik Neighbors, wide receiver LSU. And they give up a 2025 first rounder as well, do the Jets. Okay, I'll, I'll play along for fun purposes. There's okay, no. great. That the, the Jets, when they don't win the Super Bowl next year, <laughs> and when Aaron Rodgers opens up some mushroom farm, that, that organization will crater to Middle Earth. It's unbelievable. They are so all in for this year. <laughs> yeah, I, I would just say no to that. They can't be in the business of giving up a future one. But fine, go ahead. And then we continue with the normal number six, a wide receiver for the New York Giants. Uh, that is Roma Dunze. Wow. Giants don't take J.J. McCarthrop? They do not no. take J.J. McCarthrop. Uh, I will give you where he goes. He goes number 12 to the Denver Broncos. Yeah, he would never get past Sean Payton. Agreed. I have no – and again, that's probably the most – Everybody looks around and goes, all right, I, I could live with that. Because the difference between going 20th and 12th, not a big deal. Right. You start getting into the top five, it gets a little silly. Yeah, that, that would make sense to me. Where are you at with J.J.? I th- the problem with J.J. is we don't know. I, I think he's going to be a good quarterback, but not. A, I don't think he's going to be a great quarterback. And I think he's going to take a while. Well, when you he, throw it 15 times a game in college, right, it usually that's the, does. That's the problem. Like, no, look, if he played in LSU's offense, that's his different. numbers would be completely different. Oh, I, probably. I said from the very yeah, beginning, I didn't remember when he was not splitting time with Cade. Yeah. And I'm going, why didn't you just go to Ole Miss? Yeah. They would have paid you a million dollars and you would put up 5,000 yards a year right. and this this would be settled. Right. Go ahead, David. Yeah, so let me give you and go back as of the trade down. So 10, now the Chargers are sitting at 10. They took offensive tackle from Oregon State, Talese Fuaga. He's I, I like him. That's such a hardball pick. Too. He's very mean. Yeah. Yes. Not hardball. The, the, well, the, no, hardball's the, mean too. But, yes. but the kid from Oregon yeah. State, he's he just plays very mean. Then the Patriots get with their trade down here at a number eleven, Quinion Mitchell. But what? Uh, why? What? Okay, hold on. I'm gonna I'm gonna just I'm gonna punt on this and I'm gonna let the Godfather handle it. Explain what the hell the Patriots are doing. I have no freaking clue. All the cap space this offseason. What did they do with it? Nothing. Okay. Did they get a quarterback in the draft when they're sitting top three? Apparently not. They've traded down. Help me. Who's their quarterback next year? I mean, they got rid of Mac Jones, right? Like I said. They brought back. um, Help me. Bailey Zappi. Zappi. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they have him, but um, can't think of the other guys. They used to play for them, return. Yeah. He's not good. Yeah. Don't care. 
What the hell are oh, they Jacoby doing? Oh, Jacoby Brissett. Not a starter in this no. league. No. I okay, David. I will say this: it's a fun mock draft. I don't think there is a scenario where the Patriots can trade outside of the top six and not end up with a quarterback. Mm-hmm. I just it doesn't. From a franchise standpoint, it doesn't make sense. Well, now, who do your Steelers get there, David? Uh, the Steelers, they select at number 20, Amarius Mims, tackle out of Georgia. That makes sense. You need offensive line yes. help. Yeah. But You've Georgia been, offensive lineman, has not you been know, great. has not been great. Not great. No. Shout out Isaiah Wilson. <laughs> uh, the Eagles take at 22, Jarrett Verse. I'd be pretty good replacing Reddick. Yes, I like Verse is one of the guys where there seems to be a huge variance in opinion. I've seen him top ten. I've seen him damn near outside of the first round. It's it's fascinating how draft to draft, no one knows, no one has a consensus no. on him. Well, there doesn't seem to be a consensus on this either because in mock drafts he's all over the board. Patriots get those two picks from the trade down at twenty three. They select Brock Bowers, tiny in Georgia. He doesn't make it to 23. You, I, would, you wouldn't think so. I don't get what's happened. You know, for me, he's still one of the five or six players in this draft that right. you just look at as a true difference maker. I mean, I've never seen a tight end like him. The routes that he runs. If the Giants took him at six, you'd be okay with that? Sure. Okay. Uh, if someone could tell me uh, how much longer we're waiting for Darren Waller to make a decision, <laughs> right? Uh, I wouldn't have a problem with it. Okay. Like, I don't – my team blows – so basically, just you handing me a good football player yes. is handing a homeless person a blanket. Right. You can't complain that it's not made of cashmere. I, I just, I, I don't care. Give me a human being okay. who can possibly make my dad smile. This team is <laughs> killing my dad. At 29, the Detroit Lions take out of Missouri. Rakestraw. And from the Detroit area, Darius, Darius Robinson. Yeah. The D tackle. Good player. Yep. Listen. I, I am. People are going to hate this in the lead up to the draft because I will turn into a Brad bot at 29. Let Brad cook. I don't have a huge opinion at 29. Okay, let me ask you this, though. In, sure. this, in this scenario, this guy is available at 29. What? Nate Wiggins from Clemson. Okay, here's what I would say to you Brad Holmes' specialty in scouting for the Rams was defensive backs. Mm hmm. He drafted Brian Branch and got it right. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. I, they wanted Witherspoon. Yes. Now, they would have been right. He ended up being very good. Yes. I, if he passed on him, right, I they, would actually defend it by saying, guys, there's look, something he didn't like. Look at this. Look at his track record. Yes. In that sense, I could. Yeah. yeah. He's earned that. I got no uh, But Wiggins makes sense on paper that he's long, lanky. He's got big top end speed. You, I mean, he had a play against Miami. He chased down an 80-yard touchdown, the ultimate grit hustle guy, Fixed got him lines. down at the two. Right. I, It would make sense to me. Mm-hmm. Go ahead. Give me, give me. Where's Penix go? Is he with the Giants? Penix does not get you drafted in the first round. You are a piece of garbage. Which is a shock All right, to can me. Can I ask this question? Yeah. When it's all said and done and we're all working the draft that week, does Michael Penix go in the first round? Yes. Yes. I think so, too. Very hard for me. If we're drafting J.J. on projection, how do you not draft Penix on production? That end of the first round seems I th- I th- right I, for a team to trade into. It might not be a good enough reason, but I think it's the injury history. Okay. That, that, would, that would be the only reason. And if the medicals don't add up or yes. you think he's going to be Lieutenant Dan by year three, <laughs> so be it. I get it. I got you. Jenny. <laughs> you got new legs. All right. (laughs) David, thank you for the mock draft.